Yo, what is good guys, back here with another YouTube video, and in case you cannot tell by the title below, this video will be a video where I share my honest thoughts and opinions on someone or something going on in uh, this wacky weird world of professional wrestling. This one is a little bit different with today marking 17 years since the passing of Eddie Guerrero, I figured that... Uh, because of that, and along with him being one of my uh, favorite wrestlers of all time, I would share some of my favorite matches of uh, his career. Most of them are from uh, WWE, because that's how I really knew about him when I was 9, 10, 11 years old. Uh, from January of 2004 to November of 2005, uh, kind of deal. Like, legit month before I uh, turned 10 was the first time I seen Eddie and it clicked. And before I share uh, some of my favorite matches of Eddie, I would love to know uh, some of yours. It doesn't have to be just WWE. It could be WCW, ECW, independent independent wrestling kind of deal, uh, like Mexico, Japan, Ring of Honor uh, kind of deal. I would love to know down in the comments below. There's only one WCW match, and I think everybody who's watched it would say that one, it's their favorite Rey Mysterio match, favorite Eddie match, probably one of their favorite WCW matches, if not their favorite match of all time. It is Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, Halloween Havoc, 1999, and I was three years old, like several years before I started watching wrestling, but watching it back on DVD, on one of the DVDs that I have uh, in my collection, uh, kind of deal uh, and whatnot. It's like over, what was it, like 25 years later kind of deal-ish, I'm not the best at math, it still uh, holds up and the rest of them are from WWE, again that's what I really knew him as and most of them are on the Viva La Rosa, the legacy of Eddie Guerrero 3 disc set that came out in 08 uh, and whatnot. Uh, first one, uh, it was kind of before my time but with Eddie being my second favorite wrestler of all time and Edge being number one, of course I had to have their no DQ match from an episode of SmackDown back in uh, September of 2002. And mind you, again, this was a couple of years, year and a half or so before I started watching uh, regularly. And just seeing this match and knowing that it happened uh, before uh, Edge got his neck injury, I think his neck injury uh, started in this match, or at least that's when he felt it, if I remember right. Uh, and Edge a uh, little bit before he really hit his stride, Eddie Guerrero, uh, kind of the same deal, like he just came back a little bit before from being let go, rehab, all of that stuff, but still seeing this match back in 2002, I wish I could have seen it in like 2008, 2009 when both of them were, or at least Edge was a lot more comfortable in his own skin kind of deal if that makes any sort of sense and Eddie was more Eddie kind of deal and whatnot but either way that is legit one of my favorite matches uh kind of deal for Eddie and the next one is one of my favorite slash best matches but it's more so for the moments kind of deal I think everybody similar kind of deal uh and whatnot Brock Lesnar Eddie Guerrero no way out 2004 the match was a good Brock Lesnar match it was a uh like good Eddie match as well but like seeing him win the championship the crowd over in uh california popping continuously like that reaction made a let's say a 7 out of 10 uh match into like a 20 out of 10 uh match and whatnot and uh next match uh how do I put this like everybody if they start watching wrestling as a kid has that uh, one of their first defining moments of, hey, now I'm hooked. This one, the steel cage match for the WWE Championship, JBL Eddie Guerrero, has one of those uh, defining early moments of my wrestling fandom kind of deal and whatnot, and that's this match, frogs splash off the top of the uh, steel cage and whatnot. And during that time, I was 10 and a bit, 
kind of deal. It was summer vacation, July of 2004. One of the few times throughout the year I could watch Smackdown quote unquote live. Uh, kind of deal and whatnot. And I remember cheering to Eddie Guerrero so hard, so long. Like the entire two hour episode kind of deal could have been filled with Eddie Guerrero and I would still not be bored. And despite JBL and not being a fan of him back then or now for different reasons, I was still uh, emotionally involved in this match. And like I said, the frog splash off the top of this steel cage. Another reason why it's one of my favorites, more so for that moment, but one of his best matches, if you would have asked me again, as a now 11-year-old kid, September of 2005, uh, just a couple of months before uh, he he passed away uh, and whatnot, but Rey, Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, Steel Cage, this was the last match in their several month long feud involving a Dominic Mysterio and like I mentioned earlier, Eddie, my second favorite, Rey Mysterio, my first favorite, or my third, third, number three, not number one, uh, kind of deal and whatnot, and seeing this as a kid got me emotionally involved and I think this might have been the last TV match that they one on one that they had against each other which makes it like hit differently kind of deal and it was like the first TV match I think ever could be wrong that uh, Eddie actually beat Rey Mysterio one on one uh, that is I could be wrong but I don't remember any other times off the top of my head uh, and whatnot. So those are some of my uh, favorite or the best matches, whatever I put down in the title below. For Eddie Guerrero's uh, career, would love to know some of uh, his matches, whether again, it's WWE, ECW, WCW, uh, quote unquote independence, like time down in Mexico, over in Japan, Ring of Honor, uh, kind of deal. Would love to know down in the comments below. While you are down there, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it would mean a lot to myself if you did. More importantly, hope you guys are doing okay mentally, emotionally, and physically. The world that we tend to make up is nothing but a fantasy until you wake up. I feel like I'm just lying to myself. Lying to myself, yeah. Cause I just crossed the line like I'm playing offside. I do it how I want and I'ma do it till I die. I feel like I'm just lying to myself. But it's